Coming up tonight on KSL Outdoors. It's a cast and blast in northwestern Utah as we chase the native greater sage grouse. And we're going to complete our Utah cutthroat slam with the Yellowstone cutthroat. I'm Adam Eagle and this is KSL Outdoors. KSL Outdoors with Adam Eakle is brought to you by your local Ford stores. Thanks for tuning in to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eakle along with Paul Thompson, Avery Cook, and Brett Wanacott. And Paul, we are finishing up our Utah Cutthroat Slam, and you got a shotgun in your hand. I know. We're going to start with the cast and blast. We'll get some sage grouse, and then let's go get our Yellowstone. That's pretty cool. It will be cool. Yeah, and it's uh, opener of the duck hunt, I believe, today. And look at, we got yeah. Brett Wanacott out here. They dragged the... me to the desert. <laughs> we <opening>. did. <laughs> and Avery's going to kind of give us a, a look at these birds and sage grouse. We've already spotted them. Let's go get them. All right, let's do it. Get up. They're one of my favorite species to hunt out here. It's a real mellow hunt, something that's easy to take beginners and family out on. Just wandering around good uh, sagebrush habitat, you're pretty likely to run into them. We came to Box Elder County to complete our Utah Cutthroat Slam, something that we started this past spring. Seek. We also came to hunt the greater sage grouse. That's when I found out there's an upland game slam for hunters as well. That's where you choose one of five different slams from rabbits, grouse, turkeys, pheasants, even chuckers. The cost is $20 for adults, 10 for youth. So you go pick up your card and then you come out into the field, hunt what you're gonna hunt. Whoa. Me too. We got, that's four, Adam. And then you'll just take a picture of yourself, your slam card, the animal you're hunting for the slam, and just have that on your phone and you can bring it back to any of the retailers and you can get one of the coins, which are the, the prizes we're giving out. Hold, drop, dead perfect. What the program is designed to do is uh, a few things. One is to raise money for conservation projects. We're able to use that money as match to get a three to one federal match on most of these projects. Get it, Adam. Good shot. He'll get that one for us. Good boy, Tick. Get it. Drop. Loose, loose, drop. 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 Good boy, Tick. Tick, here, dead bird. Brett, as much as you've uh, hunted birds, this is your first sage grouse. That's my first sage grouse. Cool. Yeah. They're big bird. Your first one as well, Adam? My first bird too. Congratulations, guys. Yeah, yeah thank I mean, you. There's a lot of birds out here. I've been coming out to this country for 20 years and, and consistently getting birds. Yeah, they're a big bird though. Like I said, they're heavy. That's they four pound birds. bird there. These are big and these are even the small ones. These, these are the are small ones, huh? Right here, right here. That's cool. And uh, by law, since we've tagged, you're tagged out. Yep. Uh, we got to tag these though. Yeah, let's tag them before we hunt further. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Greater sage grouse populations have declined for decades, mostly due to the loss of sagebrush habitat. Last year, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service determined that the greater sage grouse was not warranted for listing under the Endangered Species Act. Western states, including Utah, have invested tens of millions of dollars in sage grouse conservation. Grouse. These conservation measures are making Utah's sage grouse habitats more resilient, redundant, and capable of supporting more sage grouse. Utah does issue a limited amount of tags for sage grouse, and the DWR gets valuable data from the harvest. And the hunt allows uh, the state to do a number of things. Um, one, we can get some pretty valuable data. So uh, if you're out hunting and you see a wing barrel, really appreciate it if you pull a wing off. You can just cut them right here at the shoulder, toss it in that wing barrel. And what that allows us to do is look at these wings and we can determine sex and uh, age few more to add. off of the wings so we can get an idea of what our production is that year. Oh, there we go. Here's your point. Whoa. There it is. Get it. Good shot. Since it's a hunted species, we can use the license dollars uh, generated from selling tags and selling licenses Good boy. to put towards habitat work and management of the species. Look at the tail. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. 
well, hey, our limits, and we're only maybe a quarter mile from the truck. <laughs> this <laughs> no. isn't chucker hunting. No, no, this is easy for, compared to that. Yeah. yeah, easy walking and a that's big right. bird, and boy, they're just, they're pretty, Avery. I mean, that's, that's a neat looking bird. They're quite man magnificent little guys. Yeah, even prettier when they strut, and we'll see how they taste for table fare. Yeah, yeah. let's do it. All right, hey, we've got more coming up here. In fact, we're going fishing next. We'll have that here in a moment, but first, tonight's climate quiz question. The greater sage grouse, also known as the sage hen or the sage chicken, is the largest of the North American grouse and can weigh upwards of seven pounds. But the greater sage grouse is not the only grouse native to Utah. Our climate quiz question tonight is, can you name all five native grouse species found in Utah? Now, once you know the answer, log on to our KSL Outdoors Facebook page, give us the correct answer, and while you're at it, give us a like. We'll then randomly select and announce a winner on our Facebook page the following week. The winner, set to walk away with a Climate Static V sleeping pad. Climate, comfortable, rugged, and lightweight. KSL Outdoors will be right back to Northwestern Utah. KSL Outdoors is also brought to you by Fish Tech Outfitters, Utah State Parks, Burt Brothers, Sportsman's Warehouse, Evanston, Wyoming, Climate, Intermountain Wind and Solar, and Camp Chef. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eagle along with Paul Thompson. And boy, we had an amazing morning this, this oh, morning. Oh, we did. That was cool. We had a first. A lot of firsts for you today. A lot of firsts. A lot of firsts. And now we're going to uh, try something different. We're going to actually try and catch and finish our slam, the Yellowstone Cutthroat. Yep. Yep. I think we can do it today. It's a long drive out here. It is a long drive. And we're about as far west as you can go in Utah. All right. Let's go hit it. Okay. Oh, here we go. Come on. There he is. Oh! Oh, Adam! Oh! That was your only chance at a Yellowstone. This area out in uh, northwest Box Elder, the Raft River drainage, all of these little streams uh, flow into the Raft River, which flows into the Snake River, and that's why we have native Yellowstone cutthroat out here. There he is! Look at oh, yeah! <laughs> God! Keep it on the shore! All right, let's take that. My first. Yellowstone cutthroat in a native portion of Utah. And more importantly, my slam is done. Look at that guy. Nice. That's the spotting on this is uh, that large spots towards the tail and then um, fewer as you get closer to the head. It's just classic Yellowstone, classic Yellowstone. patterns. Yep. Beautiful cuts for oh, a cutthroat. Great fish. We introduced you to the Cutthroat Slam back in April in a nutshell. Man, a little three-way, that's a good fight, Adam. The Utah Cutthroat Slam is a challenge to anglers to catch all native cutthroat found in Utah in their native range. Woo. That's a great way to start off, isn't it? We started with the Bear River Cutthroat in Bear Lake. We then showed you the colorful Colorado River Cutthroat down on the boulders. Then, beautiful bunny. It was on to the Utah State Fish, the Bonneville Cutthroat that we found in Mill Creek. Today, good fish. we're catching the Yellowstone Cutthroat in its native range on the Raft River Mountains. In western Box Elder, we have four streams on Sawtooth Forest that hold Yellowstone Cutthroat trout. We have One Mile Creek in its major tributary Sawmill Canyon. We have the headwaters of George Creek. We have Johnson Creek and its tributaries. And we have Wildcat Creek. There it is. <laughs> So all four of those are easily accessible on the Sawtooth National Forest. Call our Division of Wildlife Office, Northern Region, and we'll give you all kinds of information on how to go and catch fish there. There's also a few streams that are on private land. There we go. Some of it is accessible, um, but just respect private property if you decide to, to wander off the National Forest. Come out here, get your slam. I mean, you can't ask for a, a nicer, prettier cutthroat trout than that. You could work it anywhere from the tail of that all the way up to the top, but I wouldn't doubt the fit. There's some fish hanging right at the top of that where that drops into the pool. The easiest way to slam up is to go to the Utah Division of Wildlife website, wildlife.utah.gov. You'll see a teaser for the cutthroat slam there. You can also find out more information at utahcutthroatslam.org. Uh, people are pretty engaged in this. There's discussion and, and there's pride for accomplishing this. And, and you know, you should feel pride when you do this. It's a cool thing. There it is. <laughs> Get him out of there. 
Nice switch too. Alright! Dead! Nice job, buddy! Nice fish. Look at that, that is a good fish. This is this is working out alright today. <laughs> <laughs> Limited grouse. We got about eight cutthroat under our belt so far. Double. Look at that. There we go. <laughs> oh, and he gets off. He might oh, think of your fly. That was cool. Hey, what a what a neat little stream and what a great opportunity, right? You know, there's a lot of opportunities for Yellowstone cutthroat out here, and there's some nice fish to be had. You, yeah. That's a great fish. For a stream you can jump across and you catch yeah. an 11, 12 inch fish today. Yep. Yeah, it's great. Pretty impressive. And most important, we finished our slam. We did. It took us all summer, but people could do this <laughs> faster. They could even start it right now. You can start now, you can get one fish and, and then get the rest next year. If you have one left and you're into hunting right now, don't worry about it, get it next year. Um, and you can do it as many times as you want. So if you've completed it this year, go do another one next year. Hey, we got a lot more here coming up from Northwestern Utah in a moment, but first back to the guys at Fish Tech for tonight's fishing report. One of the most requested things that people ask for is a tool to tie knots on hook. Most people have that tool and they don't even know it. Hi, I'm Dan Smith from Fish Tech Outfitters. The tool I'm talking about is hemostat, needle nose pliers, something in that fashion. And I'm gonna show you how to do it with a pair of hemostats. So first what you do is you run the line through the eye. This happens to be a jig head. You stick the tag in out the side. Take your hemostats, stick it through the loop, twist it. Now when you're twisting, you wanna make sure that the lure or the hook stays underneath the hemostats and doesn't go up into the twist. All right, I twisted it six times. I grab the tag and pull it through, get rid of the hemostat, take the main line, pull it tight. There you go, the fisherman's knot. Really easy and most people have the equipment to do it. If you have a hard time with dexterity in your fingers, this will work great. If you have any questions or if you want me to demonstrate this in person, come on down to Fish Tech and we'll help you out. Now for the nice fishing line. Got one, bigger one. That's a great fish. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors here on the Raft River Range as we highlight the Utah Cutthroat Slam. We've had more than 600 already sign up for it. That's a pretty nice fish. Uh, we've already had our first project that was funded by Cutthroat Slam money, so things are going really, really well. This is Johnson Creek, Sawtooth National Forest. You know, in 2001, Paul was part of the crew that discovered pure genetic populations of Yellowstone cutthroat trout here on the Raft River Mountains. Ever since then, the DWR has been working on projects to restore and enhance the habitat and the population of Yellowstone cutthroat trout here in their native range. This is a stream the division's been working on for probably five or six years to try to restore to Yellowstone cutthroat trout. The interesting thing about this stream is we had a pocket of Yellowstone cutthroat in the headwaters, about the top three miles, but brook trout have been just taking this stream over and we were afraid we were gonna lose that population. So we didn't, we wanted to chemically treat the brook trout out, but we had to save the Yellowstone cutthroat trout as the source for this stream. So we did kind of a unique project on this stream where we put in a barrier in the headwaters we spent three summers with a backpack shocking and a crew of 12, and we did 11 passes through three miles of stream to remove brook trout. We were successful to protect that cutthroat population, and that allowed us to then chemically treat the lower 10 miles of this stream um, to where the entire drainage now is made of Yellowstone cutthroat trout. Eventually, this is gonna be our gem for Yellowstone cutthroat trout in Northern Utah. We've had more than 70 kids sign up for it, which is wonderful. We've had people from 20 different states sign up for it. I think uh, Paul and I are both uh, surprised a little bit by the um, popularity of it. I think anglers in Utah and uh, the rest of the, the country, we're, we're kind of hungry for something like this here. And you know, we're really excited about the opportunities for anglers to learn about the different species of cutthroat in Utah and their home range, their historic range. There's a fish. And it's important, I think, to just appreciate what, what was here when the pioneers arrived. It's also important to keep in mind that these species have all been petitioned for listing on the endangered species list. 
and we need to protect the populations where they exist. Did it. I did it. I'm glad you didn't have to use my fish from Bear Lake. <laughs> I know. No, no. I'm going to frame that. You should it's frame awesome. it. Yeah. This is frame worthy and the coin is yeah. uh, special as well. Yeah, right, this you. coin is so uh, cool that Paul had to do it twice so he could display I both did. sides. I completed twice this year <laughs> and I got it framed with a certificate in both sides of the coin. Very cool. Hey, get out, participate in the Cutthroat Sam. Remember, you can start it now, finish it next year, finish yeah. two years from right. now. Or Anytime. 10. Yeah, or 10. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, we'll have more here coming up in a moment, but first, down a different trail in tonight's Utah Field Guide. Native to southern Eurasia, the chucker partridge was first introduced into Utah back in 1951. By 1968, nearly 200,000 chuckers had been released on Utah's public lands, giving hunters plenty of opportunity to harvest this popular but challenging upland game bird. The chucker is a small chicken-like bird distinguished by its pale colored but boldly patterned feathers and its red feet, legs, and bill. Chuckers are fast flyers and prefer arid rocky hillsides, mountain slopes, and canyon walls. This year, hunters can expect plenty of chuckers in the hills. In fact, biologists say the chucker numbers are similar to last year when hunters had more chuckers to hunt in nearly a decade. Biologists say weather conditions for chuckers have been ideal over the past nine months and many adult birds survived and will be available to hunt this year. This should be a great season to get into chucker country and pursue this unique and tasty bird. Some of the best places to find chuckers is in Utah's West Desert, but reports from DWR biologists in other areas of the state indicate chucker numbers are doing just as well there too. The statewide hunt for chuckers runs through February 15th with a bag limit of five chuckers per day. For more information, be sure to check out our Utah Field Guide on our outdoors page at ksltv.com. We've had wind, we've had rain, we even had some hell today, but it's still been a pretty good day for catching fish and shooting some birds. Could be a little cooler. It's pretty hot hiking in these trucker hills. Let's find out that vacation forecast now by turning it over to the guys and gals in the weather department. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors, back here in northwestern Utah hunting chuckers. I'm Adam Eagle. Hey, don't forget, if you caught a tagged fish up at Strawberry Bay Marina Tag Fishing Contest this year, we are having the closing ceremonies November 5th right there at the KSL studio. So that is for people who caught a tagged fish, make sure to show up at the studio. You'll have a chance. Who knows, you might win that big boat as our grand prize. And don't forget, the contest runs through October 31st. <laughs> Well, Paul, those uh, the cutthroat are pretty. Yellowstones are pretty, but for our, Brett and I having our first sage grouse, we gotta we gotta take a picture of those. Yeah, congratulations, guys. I mean, this is this is something unique to do, and um, I've been doing it for close to 20 years. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's pretty bird and just unique and native to Utah. It is. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Hey, don't forget when you're out and you have a first, whether it's a a deer, an antelope, an elk, or even a sage sage chicken like this big guy, take a picture, submit it to our snapshot contest. Now, the best of the week, our snapshot of the week. We kick it off with some more sage grouse success as Eli shows off the birds he and his dad Ryan kicked up with the help of their dog Zephyr and pup Stella. Ryan says it was a great first for Eli. Six-year-old Evan was able to witness how his dad fills the freezer for the first time last weekend on a pronghorn hunt down on the Parkers. Evan and his dad Kyle hunted hard for two days to find a mature pronghorn buck in the perfect position where Evan could be right there front and center to see the shot and harvest. Kyle says this hunt with his son is what hunting is all about. Bailey was so excited to learn that she'd been selected for the DWR Mentored Youth Waterfowl Hunt. Bailey practiced hard before the hunt and was able to drop four ducks early in the morning at Ogden Bay. Bailey wanted to thank Wyatt and Michael for guiding her and her brother and for the great memory they gave her family. Easton worked hard this winter to finish up hunter safety so he could hunt waterfowl this year. Dad took him to Wyoming for the opener of the goose hunt and this nine-year-old surprised even Dad with a perfect shot on this goose as it finished into their spread. Easton and Dad were so excited you would have thought they had just won a million bucks. But our winner tonight finally got her buck so she could chase some trout. Bridget Fable is a self-described fly fisher woman, but she also had her dedicated buck tag to fill. Late in September, she did just that with this fine 3 by 4 Bridget then put her muzzleloader down, grabbed her fly rod, and had a great day catching some amazing brook trout. Bridget says it was a lucky week for her, but I've always thought, Bridget, people make your own luck with hard work 
and you've earned every bit of your success, and now you've won our big prize for having our Snapshot of the Week. Remember, submit your pictures or video plus an explanation of your latest outdoor adventures online at ksltv.com. The winner each week wins a commemorative 100th anniversary National Park's cast iron Dutch oven and skillet. And the winner is also entered into our Ford Trucks quarterly Facebook giveaway for a Camp Chef pellet grill. If you're going to smoke, grill, or bake, the Camp Chef Smoke Pro's got you covered. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Well, that was a fun couple of days. I mean, the sage grouse was a lot of fun. That was fast. Yeah, it was fast and furious, but I'd never shot a sage grouse, so what yeah. the heck, huh? We did it. Yeah, yeah, we did. Well, it was cool, a neat place, and uh, I'm excited to come out here and chase deer. <laughs> yeah, no, the Raft River Mountains are, are a wonderful place. Come catch a Yellowstone while you're chasing deer. Yeah, it's thanks, guys. It's great time to be out here. It's beautiful. It is beautiful, and uh, like we were saying earlier, man, that this cutthroat slam, it opens up your eyes. For me, this is the only place that, for me that I've never been, so it was cool. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Same here. A lot of fun. Well, get out and do the cutthroat slam. Get out and hunt those sage grouse. I yeah. think there were still a few tags left. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Box silver, for sure. Yeah. We certainly saw plenty of birds. We saw plenty of birds. Get out and make some memories outdoors. I'm Adam Eagle. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.